Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is one of my absolute favorites to film in the entire year. And this is going to be my Pan Those Eyeshadows 2022 intro. I am filming this a, a little behind where I wanted to be, but that's okay. I have a lot of videos like filmed that haven't been posted, so everything's a bit backlogged. So bear with me. Clearly I'm in a much better mood than I have been in my previous videos. I'm just feeling a lot better. Thank you guys so much for all your love and support. This is going to be my Panos Eyeshadows 2021 finale and my 2022 intro as over the last month I really haven't been using my Project Pan eyeshadows very much and I thought it would just be kind of a lame video to have my finale separate from my intro and that just made the most sense to put them together. So before getting started this project was obviously created originally by Alexi and everyone has tweaked it to suit their own needs. In 2021 I randomized five eyeshadows one of which I wanted to be a non cruelty free eyeshadow. My goal is to use it 30 times or hit pan on it and if I rolled in a brand new never been used before palette then my goal is to use the palette as a whole 10 times focusing in on the shade that did get rolled in but I don't need to use that shade exclusively in those 10 uses. Um, just so I actually had a proper review on a palette and I didn't just, you know, work on one shade in a palette and still have no idea how I feel about it as a whole and if I want to keep it in my collection, etc. I am going to switch things up just a tiny bit again in 2022, but first let's just get through the finale part. Um, I will insert a picture of what my color story was looking like over the last month. Pretty boring, pretty matte heavy. Um, I wasn't really feeling that inspired by it. It was very much a kind of cool tone neutral palette. There was one pretty warm brown in there, but when a color story is like that and I could get that exact color story from a palette I already own, I struggle to want to open up five, six, whatever palettes in front of me to create my eye look for the day, if that makes sense. Um, I just combined with not really wearing makeup all that often. Here we are. I'm trying to pull up my notes. I reached for four of the six shades one time each. So not very good. So let's just recap what has been in the project for the last month. First, my non-cruelty free shade is the Sephora Pro Warm Palette. I'm working on the shade Clay. I have not used this at all over the last month. Um, I could have used it today, but I used another one of the palettes exclusively today. Um, where am I at? This is Clay right here. I did use this shade 26 times in this project so I only needed four more uses to technically meet my goal but I didn't do that. Next I had my ABH Jackie Ina palette. I rolled in the shade Credit. I did use that in my brows today which is why they're looking a little dark and scary. Um, I went in and it was too late to back out because it's the last thing I did in my makeup today. Um, so I used the shade Credit and this palette seven times in this project. My goal is to use it 10 times as it was new to me. So I didn't meet that goal and I only reached for this palette once this last month and that was to do my eyeshadow today. My eye look and my eyebrows are from this palette. So I've used this palette in its entirety seven times and it definitely needs more love but I'm happy to say I think I've used every shade in here except for maybe Wigglies, this red shimmer. Um, I don't think I've used that one, but I'm very happy with my usage on this palette um, and I'm excited to reach for it more in the future. Another new palette to me was my Dominique Cosmetics Transition Palette. This is another palette I have not used over the last month. I only reached for it one time previously and the shade rolled in was the black. I haven't used that at all. So this was a big fail. This will go back up into my everyday makeup drawer, um, whether it gets rolled into this project again or not to actually get, you know, proper usage on this and know my feelings 
Um, I used these three shades here the one time I used it and I really enjoyed it, but obviously I cannot review or like know my feelings on this palette with just one single use and only reaching for three shades in here. So this will be going back upstairs with me regardless, but this was also a bit of a fail for this project. That's okay. Next up from my Winky Lux Kitten palette, I rolled this in for the second time. This time for the shade Holographic, which I only used one time this last month, making for a total of five uses in this project. This shade here, it is a like lavender to blue duochrome. I hope that the camera is picking that up. It's very beautiful. Um, I've been setting my primer, eyeshadow primer with this shade and will continue to do so and hope to hit pan by the end of the year. Though I only reached for this shade five times and obviously didn't meet my goal or hit pan in it in this project, I've reached for this palette as a whole 65 times um, just this year. So I'm very happy with my usage on this palette. Last month I did roll in two new shades. First was Natasha Denona Thorn, which is the center shade here. This palette is brand new to me. My goal is to use it as a whole 10 times. I only reached for it once. So again, this palette is going back upstairs to use this palette as a whole many more times to get my review on it. It's a very beautiful shade. Great Natasha Denona formula. CM, is that creamy matte? I don't have much to say on this. That was really loud in my ear and I'm sure loud for you too. But again, going back upstairs to get used some more. And lastly, the sixth shade I rolled in was from my Pretty Vulgar Nightingale palette. This is the second time it was rolled into this project as well. Last month I rolled in the shade After Midnight, which appears to be a really deep gray, but it's more of a light gray. I used it as a transition shade or a crease shade, sorry just one time. But again, this palette was rolled in, my hair is all over the place, into this project earlier in the year and I used this palette as a whole, where is it? Over 30 times this year. So I'm very happy with that. Um, I used this palette, that one use uh, with that gray shade for Christmas dinner. I did a cool tone, like kind of glam look and really enjoyed it. Clutch on the lid was absolutely beautiful. The shimmers in here are what is really special to me. And I overall really enjoy this palette. I don't really love the way it's laid out. I mean, it's cutesy. It fits the theme. It's like a bird cage. Um, and I kind of wish at least that the eyeshadows were all the same size and shape. So if I depotted it, it would lay nicely in a Z palette, but that's besides the point. So overall, I didn't meet any final goals for this finale, but I'm very happy with my usage through this project this year. I was able to hit pan in six eyeshadows within this project. I also met my 30 use goal on five additional shades um, outside of those six. So I met my goal on 11 eyeshadows within this project. And overall I hit pan on 13, no, 12 eyeshadows, I think, in my collection this year, which my goal is to hit pan in 21 eyeshadows in the year of 2021. And my goal for 2022 will be 22 eyeshadows. I set out to work on fewer eyeshadows in other projects and really focus on pan those eyeshadows as my eyeshadow panning source. And I definitely need to get back to that because I started just itching to play with more and setting usage goals in other projects, which was fine. But then I didn't make the progress I wanted to. So I'm trying to better strategize project pans. I say this all the time on my channel that I really lack project panning strategy. I ad really admire panners like Jessica Lee and many others who do weekly makeup baskets and are very strategic and just seem to meet goals like bang, bang, bang. They've got it all sorted out. And I just, <laughs> I lack that strategy when it comes to 
planning my projects, but also just planning my daily makeup or my weekly makeup or what have you. But overall, I have so much fun with this project. 2022 will be my fourth year doing it and it's just so much fun. It pushes me creatively. It's a way for me to rotate through my eyeshadows, combine sh shades and palettes I wouldn't necessarily do just of my own free will. And that's a lot of fun for me. So with all that being said, that was my finale for 2021. Let's hop into my 2022 intro. All right, my goals for 2022, as I just mentioned, is a hit pan in 22 eyeshadows in the year of 2022. I will be randomizing six shades for pan those eyeshadows this year, but the sixth, sixth shade will always come from one of these two palettes. These are like combined, my oldest palette in my collection. I bought them at the same time on sale at Lawton's like six or seven years ago, and neither of them have pan. I just dropped the sponge tip applicator on me. I have hair and my lip gloss. So this combined is 11 shades. I'll count one to three here and then four to 11 over here for that sixth shade and just keep rotating them out. My goal will be 20 uses and three months in the project to roll it out if I'm unable to hit pan. I'm dropping that down from 30 because 30 just takes me a really long time to reach for starters. And over the last year, I've been hitting pan and eyeshadows around the like 20 to 25 uses range or not at all by the 30 range. You know what I mean? So if I if my goal is 20 and roll it out, if I see I have a huge crater of a dip, I'll keep it in and use it that potentially five more times to actually reach that pan. But a lot of times after 20, 30 uses, there's barely a dip, of course, depending on formula. And then that extra 10 uses isn't going to get me to pan anyways. And I just I want to keep this project moving a bit more. And the three months rule, um, I, I have to have used it the 20 times and it be in for three months. So if it's a lid setting shade, I might reach 30, 40, 50 uses, depending on how much I do my makeup and still not hit pan and it still be in the project for three months. That part will make more sense as we move through the project through the next year. I hope you understand what I'm saying. I still don't wanna work on a black to hit pan on and I'm keeping in the 10 uses for the new palettes rule. Clear as mud? <laughs> Maybe I should have written that down um, but I've just been thinking about ways to change it and my rules are always fluid. If something is not working for me, I'm going to change it. And so many of you, like 95% of you say like, it's your project, make it your own. But there's always someone like, you're always changing the rules. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Um, which I also, like I see their point, but if these rules I've just said aren't working for me after a few months, we'll switch it up again. I just. This project can get stale very quickly if you're not rotating through shadows and I'm hoping with working on fewer shadows at a time, especially towards the beginning of the year, um, I'll be able to keep this project moving a little bit better and rotate through more of my eyeshadow collection. Uh, this will be a video at some point. Um, I don't have enough time and enough days in a month to get all of like December themed videos up that I would like to but I believe there are 17 palettes in my collection that I did not use in 2021 um, that I owned previous to 2021 um, and that is actually an improvement because there were 20 palettes I didn't use in the year of 2020 that I owned previously so but I would like that number to be I would like that number to be zero but I need to rotate through more of my eyeshadows. That's all I'm saying. We will be randomizing the first five shades from my whole Pan Those Eyeshadow spreadsheet. Um, I'm filming this right after Christmas. I did get some eyeshadows for Christmas and they are not in my spreadsheet yet. They will be by the time I do my makeup inventory for the new year. Um, but other than that, it should be up to date except for like palettes I literally just got. All right, let's kick it off. I've got 
a notepad and a pen, we're going to randomize five eyeshadows from the between the numbers one and 926. That's how many eligible eyeshadows I have in my collection right now. 7, 12, 74, 42. My spreadsheet is for the most part organized by like the oldest palettes are towards the top and the newer palettes are the higher numbers. Last one. Okay, before we randomize the sixth shade from those Wet n Wild palettes, let's see uh, what we've got here. Okay, I figured out what those first five shades are. Now let's randomize between one and 11 for the Wet n Wild shades. The shade number one is going to be the brow bone shade from the Walking on Eggshells trio. Okay, you guys, I'm a little nervous about what we've got going on here. But first up, we rolled 712, which was a new shade. So my goal is going to be to use this 10 times as a whole. This is my Natasha Denona Zendo palette. I've only used this once or twice ever. So I still don't have a full review on it. I'm still not ready to just focus in on one shade. So my goal will be to use this palette as a whole 10 times in this project. The specific shade I got is the first shade, Mindful. So I will give that a swatch. Feels so creamy and nice. It feels like one of her cream to powder I'm not familiar enough with Natasha Denona to know what like the things in the back mean. It is CP. Let me know down below if that means cream to powder or what. I'm not really sure. But it is a beautiful warm brown. And it is like on the more matte side. It kind of has a bit of a satin finish. But I think that's because it feels so creamy. I don't know. Clearly I need to play with this palette some more. 74 came from my Urban Decay Gwen Stefani palette in the shade Danger. Oh my gosh, which is the blue. I know this will be a three month 20 use palette because it took me like 80 uses to hit pan in one of those shades in this project before. That is Danger. I'm excited to play with it, but it's definitely a very intimidating shade. Then I got a single. Now this is kind of like a pigment. This is from the L'Oreal Infallible line. It's in the shade Silver Sky. And it's one of these ones that's kind of like pressed in with this stopper. So again, I think this is going to be a 20 use product. It's really kind of difficult to get a finger in there. And it's just as the name would suggest a silver shade. A good mix of warm and cool tones so far. My next two shades came from the same palette and you're not going to believe what palette it was. <laughs> the Jackie Ina palette. So I'm working on two shades in here. We're leaving credit behind in 2021, but now we are working on Pinker and Trust Issues. So Pinker is this rosy tone right here. And Trust Issues is this like duochrome yellowy shade. Pinker feels very dry, but it is very beautiful. And Trust Issues is more of a topper or like inner corner highlighting shade. It's a little hard to see in a swatch. I will insert a like closer up picture. But again, because this palette, I've only used it 
in its entirety seven times, I think it's going to be 20 uses and roll out because I don't foresee myself hitting pan. I'm very light handed with my makeup. I know people hit pan and ABH eyeshadows pretty easily, but I'm not one of those people. But I'm happy to keep this in my drawer and keep using it. I was really enjoying using this palette, um, but I still I don't think I'll hit pan in it. I don't think I'll hit pan in any of these shades, but I will hit pan in the brow bone shade in this Walking on Eggshells trio. This is also currently in my Roulette Pan collab to use 30 times or hit pan, but um, I really do want to like pan these palettes, Comfort Zone and Walking on Eggshells. I'm gonna put this one over here. I mean, it's just a basic brow bone shade right here. But I can't dedicate a full like pan that palette video series or anything like that because I'm not going to be going hard on these palettes um, like people do for pan that palette. But someday I would like to finish this. So yes, I will be hitting pan in the brow bone shade and I honestly think that will be the only one. I think this is a very fun color story to kick off 2022. I am a little nervous about it, but I'm happy with the selection, especially happy to work on these two palettes. I would really like to have one or two rollouts every single month, especially with my three month kind of situation I'm doing. So I would love to have Pan in Walking on Eggshells and 10 uses on the Zendo palette by my first update and roll both of these out. Um, and I would like to have multiple uses obviously on the other four shades. The blue from my Gwen Stefani palette, the two shades from the Jackie Ina, and the silver I think is going to be really fun in the winter months. That is everything for my Pan Those Eyeshadows intro for 2022. I am kind of happy that I actually don't have like a huge pile here to put in my everyday makeup drawer. Um, that might be overwhelming. So I have like a single and this tiny trio and then three other palettes. I'm pretty happy with that. Let me know in the comments down below if you're participating in this project next year. What do you think of my color story to kick off the new year? Leave me any look suggestions uh, with mixing some of these shades. I think the silver and the blue will go really well together. And then obviously I can reach for the Jackie Ina palette together. And the brow bone shade can be used every single day pretty much. So, wow first intro that I'm filming of the new year. I don't know when this is going up, but that was really exciting for me. If you did enjoy today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up so that I know, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!